In letter 19, Screwtape continues to give Wormwood about how to corrupt the patient's moral and spiritual life through his romantic life, through his love life. Devils, as we saw in the previous letter, are profoundly selfish. And like anyone who's profoundly selfish, they cannot understand love. Love to them in the fullest and best expression, fullest and best of its reality, is not something that's comprehensible to them. Because love really means a losing oneself in the other, uh, a willing the good of the other, of finding one's good in some way in something that's, that's above you and the beloved. And that's precisely what uh, the devil and all people who, are, who have a selfish outlook can't understand. It's interesting because in the course of this letter, it's Lewis imaginatively gives us a, a kind of dialogue for, between God and Satan about what the, what the role of love, what the role of the incarnation of God's love for man, what that's all about. Satan can't understand why it is that God would sacrifice himself, would unite to uh, humanity to, to save them, and immediately leaves at an infinite speed. And we're told that somehow this is being misinterpreted as Satan being thrown out. So here's Satan's own perspective on how it is that this came about. Satan fell because of pride. Whether it's because of the incarnation, whether it's because of some other reasons, theologians speculate exactly what would have been the occasion. But at bottom, it has to be that somehow Satan desired a good, a happiness for himself that he could only get from God. That he desired a good for himself to the detriment of the common good, of the good which is good for the whole universe. In Lewis's wonderful preface on Paradise Lost, he talks about Milton's treatment of Satan. He has a whole chapter, in fact, on Milton's view of Satan. Because for many years, scholars, critics, would talk about how it is that Satan's the most interesting character in Paradise Lost, and Satan's a kind of a hero or an anti-hero. Lewis rightly points out that while Milton makes the character of Satan compelling and certainly makes him memorable, the character of Satan clearly is a being that is evil and unhappy. When humans are created, when Adam and Eve are created, they talk about the world around them. They talk about God, they talk about the angels, they talk about the garden. Satan is a being that has been in the presence of God, that has been in the created world, that has been in the underworld. And no matter where he is, all he can talk about is himself. He is totally self-absorbed. There's a famous line from Paradise Lost where Satan says, Wherefore should I fly? Myself am hell. Right? As Lewis explains, the radical selfishness of Satan means that he carries his hell with him no matter where he goes. Well, in the course of the letter, Screwtape reminds Wormwood evidently an answer to some kind of question that Wormwood has asked, that it's worthless, it's useless to talk about whether or not falling in love is good or bad. From a devil's point of view, the question to ask is, is falling in love, or any other worldly thing, whether it's a, a, a profession, whether it's a job, an association of friends, the question always is, is this condition, are these circumstances more likely to move the patient away from God and closer to us? Is there, is this, is the tendency of a given state of mind and given circumstances going to move this particular patient closer to God or closer to damnation? That's all that matters. So falling in love is not something that's special or meritorious on its own. It only matters insofar as it can be used. And that's, of course, something that's helpful to us to recognize that all created things may have a certain worth and importance to us, but ultimately, is love or friendship or 
a profession or the friends we have, are these things moving us closer to God or are they moving us away from God? That's ultimately what matters. We have a tendency to compartmentalize, to say, here is my religious life, here's my professional life, here's my social life. But one of the things that's helpful about reading this advice from Screwtape is recognizing that when devils look at us, they don't compartmentalize. They don't look at us in these separate kind of boxes. For them, their whole grasp of what's going on in their lives is related to whether or not we're getting closer or farther away from our spiritual goal. Presumably, our guardian angels have the same kind of outlook. They don't make these compartmentalizations that we do. They look at the whole and whether all these things are fitting together to bring us closer to God or not. Therefore, Screwtape gives advice based on whether or not the patient's outlook on love is something that considers it as good or bad. So if you've got somebody who thinks it's bad, you can manipulate that person into choosing love in its most bestial and cynical forms. They're going to avoid love and therefore take it in its lowest form when it presses itself, when that kind of natural desire comes out. Conversely, if you have somebody who thinks it's good, you can amplify that, influence them in a way that they'll think that it's irresistible, that it's good no matter what. And so you can talk them into even things like adultery, murder, suicide. You can take that romantic influence, that romantic impulse, and tw twist the person so that they give up things which are the most important from, this, from a moral and spiritual point of view. In Lewis's book, The Four Loves, he talks about how it is that all loves, but we can think of this particular with romantic love, that love only ceases to be a demon when it ceases to be a god. At the point where you treat love, and romantic love has this tendency to, to treat it as a kind of divinity, it really is a demon. That it acts in a way that distorts all of your proper priorities and perspective. Love ceases to be a demon only when it ceases to be a god. Finally, Scoopse says that ultimately the goal would be to find a young woman for him to marry who would make the Christian life intensely difficult for him to follow. Now, when we think of a bad marriage, we think of people who come together, maybe they have some years or months of happiness, and then it goes sour and they divorce. That's not the devil's point of view. That's not Screwtape's point of view. For a successful marriage, from a devil's perspective, you want the people, not, you want the couple not to divorce, you want them to stay together. But you want them to stay together because they are bad for each other. Because they influence each other in the wrong way. They bring out the worst in each other. So the goal is not to get two unhappy people to be frustrated and then divorce. The goal is to get two people together whose union will undermine their ability to love what is best, to love things that are spiritual, to follow a path that is, that is moral. Well, in the next letter, we'll look at Screwtape's advice on how to ruin marriage. And in particular, what he's going to talk about is how it is to misdirect the sexes, how it is to influence couples so that men and women are choosing the wrong spouse. Thank <laughs> you.